How's it going everybody? First video in the new year, I hope everyone had a good start and the hangovers weren't too bad. I've promised for a while that I'll release an updated video to my really old how to gank tutorial. Things have changed a lot since then, not just in terms of character tweaks or even completely new ones, but also because we now know more about the game's nuances. And I'll also give the usual disclaimer here. I'm aware that not everyone may like this optimal playstyle. The general perception seems to be that the real skill lies in anti-ganking. You're against many and you come out victorious. When in reality, it's probably a lot because of the mistakes that the gankers made that allowed you to get revenge repeatedly and extend the fight over and over again. And being able to do so consistently is a skill in itself, no doubt about that. But please keep an open mind here when it comes to being on the side that outnumbers someone. Your objective is to, as quickly as possible, kill the solo person while trying to feed as little revenge as possible, meaning you get in as much confirmed damage as possible. Because if it takes you a long time, your other teammates on the opposing side of the map are the ones outnumbered and thus in a disadvantageous position, which you obviously try to avoid. I will structure this video a little different than most would expect. I will be going over basic concepts, basic building parts of a gank that can be put together and then form a proper gank. Just showing you advanced gank setups for very specific characters and deleting someone's health pool completely doesn't really offer any real benefits when it comes to understanding why these specific moves work and why others don't. But as I mentioned before that anti-ganking is about the mistakes of the gankers, sometimes people do a lot of stuff that gets them into more trouble while being ganked. They basically gank themselves by opening themselves up to different punishes. And I don't mean getting parried or anything, it's much simpler actually. So what we're starting with is, when you gank someone, first look at the guy and observe what he's doing. If they're pressing a lot of buttons, that usually means they make your job a whole lot easier. By that I mean, instead of trying to waste the time of the gankers and trying to prolong the time for his teammates to be able to do stuff on the map, they try to win the inherently unfavorable situation. While attacking a single person is usually safe for the most part, the moment someone else is around, a lot of things no longer are. The simplest example here is a blocked light. The moment you block a non-enhanced light, your teammate can get a free guard break on that person, because all blocked lights count as superior blocks, meaning they stop the chain that puts you in recovery. And as you know, in the recovery, you cannot count a guard break. Which ultimately means, don't put yourself into long recoveries. Throwing out finishes or bashes that result in a lot of recovery is just giving the opponent free damage. This also includes guard breaks. Don't try and guard break unless it would ensure an instant kill with the environment, because if the other guy doesn't counter, you're stuck there with no damage reduction whatsoever. So know which moves you can use to stall for longer and which you should avoid as to not make your own situation even worse. But now for the actual ganking techniques or whatever the fuck you want to call them. One of the simplest concepts and something that's applied by everyone without even knowing is to guarantee more damage by hit stun. This can both be from bash stun or actual hit stun from an attack. A little refresher here first. Hitstone cannot be prolonged forever and it does reset after the second hit. Here is a very basic example. Your teammate gets a heavy, either from a guard break, from a parry or whatever, it doesn't really matter. This means that you can confirm your heavy as well, because the first attack does stagger for a certain amount of time, meaning you cannot block, parry or dodge it. As you can see, there is some damage reduction applied. This means you want to coordinate which attack should hit first. Here is an example of the hit stagger resetting. The initial attack also confirms a bash, but the follow up for that bash is no longer guaranteed. That is very important to keep in mind. You see similar stuff happen very often where people just randomly throw lights out and thus reset hit stun for higher damage and attacks that would have otherwise been confirmed. Here are a few examples of what it looks like during fights. The other one that I mentioned is a bash setting up for more damage. 
Bashes usually guarantee some sort of damage for yourself, but if a teammate coordinates his attack accordingly, then they can get a heavy in. Keep in mind that this feeds a ton of revenge, doing this repeatedly will fill their bar rather quickly, but it is an effective way to finish someone off and get an execution out of it as well. Here is an example of a Warlord's headbutt setting up for my unblockable heavies. One of the more powerful of these is definitely Gladiator's Tor Stab. The fact that it, for all intents and purposes, functions like a bash, but applies damage instantly instead of requiring a follow-up, already puts it on top. So setting up with a Tor Stab allows for the teammate heavy, all the while doing damage yourself, and at the same time, not feeding the revenge that a bash does. I've shown this in a previous video, Tor Stab only feeds the amount of revenge of a 10 damage attack, but totally ignores the fact that it behaves like a bash. Here is an example of how to combine block stun to confirm toe stab to then confirm a follow up heavy. This specific setup here requires enhanced lights so you can do it with Warlord, Lawbringer, Jormungandr, Shugoki or PK against a bleeding opponent even. A blocked light block stuns the opponent which sets up for the toe stab. The toe stab then guarantees the combo heavy. Which brings us to setting up with block stun. You've just seen how bashes can be set up like that. Other moves that can be guaranteed with it are run-in bashes. The most usable are crashing as well as stampede charge. These are basically setups for the ledge. I've shown this in my map change video already, so you should be familiar with it. Whether the person gets hit by the attack, blocks it or even parries it, it doesn't really matter. The purpose is to lock the person in some form of recovery where they cannot dodge out of the way of the charge. In the Raider's case this easily allows for another heavy for heavy. There is a distinct difference between a stampede charge and a stampede from a guard break. For whatever reason the stampede version always gives damage reduction on the second heavy whereas from a guard break you get the lesser reduction from a hit stun as we've discussed before. Shaman's Bite can be set up the same way, but we'll get to her full gank after we cover setting up with a guard break. Which is the next topic, setting up with a guard break. You might be scratching your head now, because setting up for a guaranteed guard break is not really a thing. We are working with counter guard breaks here. Countering a guard break gives you a substantial amount of damage reduction, so throwing attacks at someone that is counter guard breaking only results in a lot of revenge gain and not in a lot of damage. But there are some multi-hit moves, as well as bleed, that do work off a counter guard break. The two main ones here are Zerka's Zone, as well as Shaolin's Triple Sidelight. There is damage reduction on each of the first hits, but because all the follow-up attacks are guaranteed regardless, this still locks your opponent in a significant amount of hit stun. And we're already familiar with this from the first segment. Hit stun guarantees follow-up heavies from the teammate. And that's exactly how both the Berserker as well as the Shaolin gank work. In Shaolin's case you need to delay the lights quite a bit to lengthen the amount of hit stun. The faster the heavy of your teammate, the easier it is to pull off. In Berserker's case, position is crucial here, you do not want to hit your teammate with your zone attack. Now here is a little mind game to counter this gank. If you know what your two opponents are doing, then you simply do one thing. You're not countering the guard break. This may sound a little counterintuitive, but here's what happens. You will be able to block the otherwise guaranteed heavy because hit stun works differently after a proper GB. Eating neutral guard breaks all the time obviously isn't the smartest thing to do, so if you, as the ganker, know that the guy won't counter, you can do the following, you can guarantee even more damage, 
as Berserker for example, you throw a top heavy of guard break. Normally this isn't confirmed, but because both you and your teammate know what's going on, the first heavy is timed so that it confirms the top heavy. This can also be done when you know your guard break is confirmed, I mentioned the blocked light confirming one at the very beginning. That's one of these instances, so depending on which character each of you play, the order can be changed so it confirms slightly more damage. Now the other thing that can be confirmed of counter guard breaks is bleed. The initial hit is damage reduced, but most of the time this is only 2 damage or something anyways, it's negligible. But the bleed is applied and it's applied fully. So now if we combine this with the previously mentioned blockstone setup, here is a full shaman gang. You GB for shaman's bleed stab, then the shaman goes into pounce stance and waits for the setup. Either the attack connects, gets blocked or parried, you immediately go in for the bite. If the opponent dodges, you time it accordingly, but do wait for the setup and don't jump the gun or you'll get hit out of the bite by the setup attack. Then this confirms another heavy from your teammate. Block stun ganks against BP do not work because of the fast flow into bulwark and then the counter. Bait it out and go for the GB or try to hit the end of the counter GB with the bite. It's not easy to land one on a competent BP. Here is an example of multiple of the previously mentioned things. First is a blocked light that leads into a ledge. Then we have an over eager lawbringer that throws out attacks which lets me freely bleed him. Then I get a setup for a bleed with a block stun. Lawbringer's impale gank also uses a GB setup. Countering a guard break or being guard broken removes your guard, which means that your lawbringer can land his impale on you. It's on the lawbringer to angle it correctly to either ledge or reach a wall. The wall's back confirms long arm, which then in turn confirms lawbringer side heavy and the teammates heavy. Lawbringer's long arm can also be set up by block stun, hit stun, bash stun, etc. One more thing to use guard break for is to time it correctly to catch the few frames in which a person doesn't have damage reduction. This is mostly used for unblockables. The key here is to catch the person either during a parry attempt or between the moment the GB connected and him not having pressed counter guard break yet. If mistimed, you just gave the person a huge chunk of revenge for very little damage. But this is an easy way to confirm an execute and finish off an opponent who's been sitting on 1 HP. The damage reduction doesn't matter in that case. And that's pretty much it, these are your building blocks for ganking people. I've already shown you some like Shaman's Bite that incorporate many of these in multiple stages. There are obviously way more out there, but some are extremely character dependent and also require proper coordination. I'll show you a few here, but be creative if you want. Your goal at first should be to properly incorporate the simple ones in your gameplay. Opponents do not always behave exactly like you want them to. Revenge can also absolutely mess up an even perfect setup. Most of what I've shown you is really straightforward, but it still requires coordination with your teammates and all parties involved need to know what they're supposed to do. So go practice and don't end up a fool in some random anti-gank montage throwing non-stop top heavies like a bellend. Let me know if you have any additional questions, this video can be expanded on if the need arises. I hope it was helpful, thanks for watching, laters everybody.